Uh, boys, say hello. Hello, Tommy. How's everything going? Uh, everything's pretty good. Pretty good. No use complaining. Busy time of the year for you, Tommy? Oh, uh, every day is busy, unfortunately. I retired and I'm busier now than when I was working. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Uh, so the first question that uh, we wrote was... Uh, where you did just fire the questions. I don't want to know. Just you, you fire away and answer, all right? Okay. Uh, where does the United States soccer go from here? Well, United States soccer goes... I mean, okay, they missed out on the World Cup finals, but hey, it's not the end of the world. You know, U.S. soccer fans are finally feeling the pain that soccer fans around the world have been many times, including my own country when we miss out on the World Cup. You just have to take it as a learning experience. For some reason, it feels like soccer fans in America felt it was the divine right to play in the World Cup finals because they'd never missed out since 86. But you know, it's a privilege, and you have to qualify. If you don't go through them, if you don't go through the results, you don't qualify. So now they have to start. The next World Cup is in four years, as far as they're concerned. And now they have to get a new manager, they have to get a whole new structure, and they have to start building a team for those. The World Cup then. Uh, how much does the loss to Trinidad put the United States back in terms of development and popularity and growth of the sport? Well, you know, it, it, it's a case of, do you look at the uh, glass half full or do you look at the glass half empty? Okay, you're going to miss out on a lot of kids who are going to, uh, you know, not see the World Cup finals on television with the United States in it. But keep in mind, you know, the most successful World Cup that was ever run was run in the United States in 1994 and the U.S. were only there for three or four games. So the fact that the U.S. is in the World Cup or is not in the World Cup is not going to make the World Cup the success that people would have you believe that it would be if the U.S. was there. Messi's going to be there, Ronaldo's going to be there, and I'll tell you, the ratings will be unbelievable. In terms of development, that's a whole different story. The World Cup is not what's helping or stopping the development in the United States. This thing of where kids have to pay at the play, that's what's stopping the development. Because every time you turn a kid away, you never know who the star is going to be. You look at kids playing soccer, you look at kids playing any sport at a certain age, there's no way you can tell if that kid's going to be a great player. But the point is, he could be a great player, or she could be a great player. And as soon as you turn them away, you've missed the opportunity to find out if they're going to be a great player. So the scouting system has to be fixed in the U.S., and uh, the identifying of the young players has to be fixed. That's what the big problem is. Hey, Tommy, I'd like to ask you, who gets the most heat for this failure? Bruce Arena, the manager, or the president of the Federation of U.S. Soccer, Sunil Gulati? Uh, neither of them, as far as I'm concerned. Wow. I mean, they should take heat, they should take heat for it. But the players that were on the field, if you're on the field, you're representing one of the greatest countries in the world. You don't even need a win. You just need a draw. All you need is was a draw against a team that had only won one game in nine, and you're telling me that you can't get that to stay alive in the World Cup finals. Well, then you certainly don't deserve to be there. Bruce Arena, I think. You know, he's done a magnificent job over the years, but yes, he had to go. But I mean, it was a backward step by Galati to take Bruce Marina back just to qualify the U.S. for the World Cup final. That doesn't solve any of the problems. Everybody in this country, for some reason, seems to think that beating the World Cup final solves all the problems that soccer has. It doesn't. And this other thing of enticing players to come back in MLS, like, you know, Dexy's back, at the door's back, it's great news for MLS. Yeah, it's great news for MLS, but is it great news for U.S. soccer? And I'll ask the simple question uh, to show you what I mean. If Christian Pulis cost, called you now and said, look, everybody's telling me I should come back to play in the MLS because I would become a much better player, what would you tell him? You'd I'd tell say, him stay at the Bundesliga. I'd say... Stay in Germany. Stay playing for Borussia. You could go to England too if you want, but stay in one of those top leagues in Europe where the level of competition is much better than it is in the MLS. And I'm a, I love MLS. You know that. Yeah, I know. But you, you have to take into consideration. I mean, uh, Ireland is in, in, in a playoff of the World Cup. There's only one player 
there's only one player, and he doesn't play in Ireland anymore, that's on the Irish squad. So the fact whether you have a good league in your country, or whether the, you know, whether, whether MLS measures up against other leagues or anything, that doesn't count. It counts with the players that are on the field, and how they play, and how good they are. And they were not very good the other night. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what team that did not qualify for the World Cup surprised you the most? Oh, obviously the Dutch. I mean, you talk about teams not qualifying for the World Cup, this is a team now that, you know, they, they have really, really done themselves in a number of times. There's a very talented team. I mean, Chile is also a very talented team. And I mean, people are saying, oh, Christian Pulis won't get to play the World Cup until he's 23 or 24. But you, if you talk to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sanchez uh, of uh, Arsenal, he's not going to play in the World Cup. And then there's a certain couple of Welsh players uh, you know, you can you can go down the line with them. Some of them will never play in the World Cup again because Ireland knocked them out last week. And you know, they're 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 over the age. They're never going to have a chance to play in the World Cup. I mean, one one of the best players in the world, Eusebio, never played in the World Cup. So you know, again, like I said earlier, guys, it's not a right to play in the World Cup. It's a privilege. Hi, Tommy. This is Alex. Hi, Eric. I follow uh, Holland pretty closely, so I have a question now. With Holland, greats Robin Van Persie and Arjen Robin stepping down from international play, how can this young Netherlands team build moving forward following a strong finish in qualifying? Well, you know, what they have to do is, they obviously, there comes a time in life, you know, Kenny Rogers said it best, you got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. And generally, football players are the last ones to realize that their legs are gone and it's time for them to go. These guys have made a decision. Two great players did great, give great service to the country. They made a decision that, okay, we can't play anymore internationally because it's killing our career and we are killing the national team. I mean, the Dutch have four years now. I mean, if you look at the players in the Dutch league, there's enough of players in the Dutch league to get yourself 18 or 25 players to put a Dutch team together that should be able to uh, should be able to qualify. As I say, should be able to qualify. Most of the times, the Dutch are the biggest problem themselves. I mean, they've fought amongst themselves many, many times leading up the World Cups, and it's been a disaster. So, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about it because, uh, you know, they have good coaches, they have good academies, they have good teams, and they come back. They have another team that they qualify for a World Cup. <clears throat> uh, in the summer when we spoke, uh, you were trepidatious to anoint Christian Pulisic, the savior of U.S. soccer, bringing up Quaresma and Freddie Adu. How has your opinion on him changed after watching him almost single-handedly whale the United States to the World Cup? How did it change? Uh, you know, Christian Pulisic is definitely uh, the man that I think is going to turn out to be the best player that the U.S. ever had, the U.S. ever brought along. And that includes Zendon Donovan, who I consider was a great player and proved himself. You know, it, but the problem is there's only one Christian Pulisic. You have to get yourself three or four more of a pretty close standard to him. And, you know, people are saying to me, no, nah, that's not true, that's not true, you just need one. Well, you go down on that, Go down and ask the Argentinians. They had just won. They had Messi. And Messi and company almost failed to get into the World Cup. In fact, after Ecuador had scored the goal the other night, uh, Argentina were out of the World Cup. So, you know, one player doesn't do it. You need a system. You need a complete system from the top down. Uh, we didn't... Uh, I didn't answer your question when you asked me about Sonny Galati. Uh, I will answer it now. Yes, he needs to go. He needs to go from the top down, every coach that's in the system, every scout that's in the system. It all needs to be appraised again. And you need to bring in people who know how the game of soccer is played and are aware of what it takes to win at international level. I hear all this talk about, hey, there's an American attitude. There is no American attitude when it comes to World Cup. When it comes to World Cup, there's a world attitude. You've got to be fit to take care of whoever you're playing. Let it be an African team, let it be an Asian team, let it be a European team. You've got to be fit to take care of them. And everybody tells me about the indomitable spirit that the U.S. always fight and the U.S. are great. Hey, you look at the you look at two games last week, and I'm not saying this because I'm Irish. You look at the Irish against Wales. They were completely outnumbered. They were completely outplayed. But at the end of the game, it was one 0 You look at the U.S. against uh, Trinidad and Tobago, a game they should have won easily, and at the end of the game, they were out of the World Cup. So it's 
Um, uh, who do you think the Republic will, of Ireland will play in the playoff? And, you know, you never know with FIFA. You never know with FIFA who they're going to get. I mean, obviously, they're in the bottom four. Uh, I mean, there's rumors that maybe FIFA are going to try to get Northern Ireland into the top four. That way, Ireland could play Northern Ireland, and FIFA won't have to deal with two Irish teams in the World Cup finals. I don't know whether that, you know, whether it never come about. Um, I would just as soon see Ireland play Italy as any team in it, because I remember 94 and the World Cup here in the U.S., people said Ireland had no chance to beat Italy. Uh, to beat Italy two years ago, so, you know, <clears throat> they Ray, can take care of Italy. Ray Houghton at Giant Stadium. Uh, who do you think the United States should hire after the resignation of Bruce Arena? Oh, I, I am not into suggesting coaches. There are a lot of good ones around the world. There's several of them that's out of work. If I was making the decision myself, I would probably go for somebody like Carlo Ancelotti, somebody who's proved that he can win and he can win at, at, a, at an amazing race. I mean, uh, people say to me, you know, well, look, at, why don't you hire an American? There's a thing that happens in America that I don't understand and I've been in this game in the U.S. for a long time. And that is, it seems like players stop playing in MLS and in a very short time, you find them as managers. That'd be Jason Christ, that'd be Peter Verbeek. You can go down the line at Jim Corton. They're all, they all show up as players, as managers, after being players. No other country in the world. Where do you see uh, the Spanish players that have stopped playing becoming a manager in a few months or in a year in England, in Italy. It doesn't happen, but it happens in MLS. So you have to ask yourself, is there something here that the people don't know, or is there something over in Europe that the people do know? Why do you think that is, that uh, players in this country go from MLS to managing? Uh, because of the relationship of people within the organization who know the players and, you know, uh, in, in a sense, in a sense, it's probably a controversial statement, but in a sense, you know, it's an old boys club. I mean, if, if coaching tends to be an old boys club around the world. I mean, you see coaches have a terrible, terrible time someplace. They get fired and the next week, two weeks, three weeks later, hey, they have another job. So coaching is a very strange thing when you come to it. And, and especially when you start bringing players in. I'm not saying that, you know, do, do they all have the badges? Do they have time to get the badges? There's so much more to coaching than just know, knowing about the game. <clears throat> Good luck with it, and, uh, you know, if I can ever help you in any way again, let me know. Will do. Thank you very, very much, Tommy. I appreciate it. Okay, guys. Good talking to you. Take care of yourselves, and good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Tommy. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.